Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm Akilu. From 403 to the HAZ, Mr. Nelson in the house. I, this is my first pre-cal 12 video, and it makes me very nervous because there's, there's kind of a lot to cover, but at the same time, there's not. So I'm just going to do my best. I've taught this a bunch of times to my class live, uh, and it's going well. So anyways, let's just go for it. Function transformations. What is a function? Well, we have learned in pre-cal 11, pre-cal 10, that we can write y as f of x, okay? So y and f of x are the same thing. So if I was to have a coordinate and I had coordinates x, y, I could rewrite that as f, x, f of x. Where essentially, I can think of it as input output. F, x is going to be my input and it's going to pump out f of x. f of x is going to be a number based on this input, just like y is the output for an input x. That is kind of the big idea here. Now, we discover that we can start transforming a function by just doing different things to it. So, and here is all the transformations kind of given to you in one. So I'm just going to jump right into it and then we'll go from there. So, a transformation y of f of x can look like this. I'm going to have, I can have a f of B X minus H H plus K. Okay. Each of these letters represents a transformation or basically something I can do to my graph uh, of f of x. And y will be the new resulting um, output. So what do each of these things do? Well, uh, a, a is going to be my vertical stretch. Okay, so A is going to cause stretching along the y-axis relative to the x-axis. So we're going to be stretching it vertically, vertically, vertical stretch. And the stretch is going to be by a factor of the absolute value of A. Okay, A will also be uh, reflections. across the x-axis, with reflections on x-axis. Okay, and that's when a is negative. So anytime a is negative, we're going to have a reflection on the x-axis. And uh, yeah, so when a is a number bigger than one, so I'm just going to do, I'm just going to start with a, I think. So when a is and when the absolute value of a is a number bigger than one, we will in fact get a stretch. Okay? And when a is a fraction or a decimal, so it's a number between zero and one, so when the absolute value of a is between uh, zero and one, and a can't equal one, it'll, it'll, be, uh, it'll just stay the same, we're going to get a compression. So we're actually going to shrink it shrink it along the y-axis. We're going to get compression, okay? So this is the first transformation, and we'll just deal with this right now, but what I want, I use two different colors here because I want us to start already noticing that A and K are going to manipulate my y-coordinates or my outputs, manipulate y coordinates. That's what I'm doing when I'm playing with a and k. And I'll kind of get into what a and k is, but let just for uh, full disclosure, a is my vertical stretch, b is going to be a horizontal stretch, and we saw this in quadratics as well. I don't think we were dealing with the b at that point. 
H and K, we, we were dealing with H and K mostly, uh, we know that H is going to be my horizontal shift. So if I have a negative H or X minus H, it means I'm going to be doing the opposite. I'm going to be moving more positive. And if I have a positive H, I'm going to be moving negative. That was just quadratic. And K is going to be my vertical shift. So if K is positive, I'm going upwards. I'm just pulling all my coordinates up. And then when K is negative, I'm pulling it down. So A and K mean I'm manipulating my Y coordinates. And this is important to recognize. I'm teaching this for the first time this year, and I'm kind of picking up the tricks on, on the fly here. So B and H means we are manipulating, we're changing our X coordinates while leaving our Y coordinates the same, assuming all things equal. So just for now, just kind of start to recognize that A and K mean we're playing with Ys, B and H means we're playing with X coordinates. We'll get to there. So the first thing we are looking at is A. We know that it's a vertical stretch by a factor of A, and we'll get into what that means. We have reflections on the x-axis when A is negative. So if I have Y is equal to negative F of X, it just means that I'm taking F of X and I am flipping it. And when A is greater or equal to 1, I'm going to get a stretch. And if A is a fraction, I'll get a compression. So what does that look like? So let's actually do a, a graph of F of X. Well, the first thing we could do is, okay, imagine I have... Uh, f of x is equal to f of x is equal to x squared. Okay, my function as uh, uh, my function of x is equal to x squared. So if I were to make a table of values for this function f x and f of x, I would you know I could do zero, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. When x is negative 2, I put negative 2 in there, it pumps out a positive 4. Negative 1 pumps out a positive 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. Okay, so that is my original function. And it's, as you know, it would be a, a parabola, just around, around my uh, uh, y-axis of symmetry. So now let's say that I have a new function and I can call it y, I can call it g of x, I can just call it some other function. I'm going to use g of x. And I tell you, g of x, I don't tell you what the function g of x is, I just relate it to f of x. And I tell you, g of x is equal to 2 times f of x. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means for each equivalent input, for each of the same inputs x, g of x is going to pump out twice what f of x pumps out. And this is A. 2A is 2, because A is sitting outside of the F and multiplying with the whole function. So I already know that for each X, the X's are going to stay the same, but I'm actually going to change my Y coordinates. Just like I say here, we're manipulating the Y coordinates. And how are we doing it? Well, we're just going to say G of X for the same X is going to be twice F of X. So what's 2 F of X? Well, here it's 8. 2 times 4. Here, it's 2. Here, it's 0. Here, it's 2. Here, it's 8. And I know from here that I'm actually stretching it by a factor of 2. So my original function was had a vertical of 4. So my original function, just for the, the coordinates I used from x is negative 2 to x is 2, it capped out at 4 and it bottomed out its vertex was at x y is equal to 0. So it was, y, it, it was 4 units tall, or 4 units high, from 4 to 0. So if we are stretching it by a factor of 2, then I should find that I actually double the size of this to 8 units. And if I were to graph what I did here, now at x is equal to negative 2, I'm going to be at 8. At x is equal to negative 1, I'm going to be at 2, and I'm going to still bottom out at 0, right? So this is what the stretch would look like for this graph, or the defined domain, so for a restricted domain here. And it goes from 8 down to 0. So we have actually doubled, we've just stretched it vertically, okay? So that's what A can do. 
So let's do a couple more. Let's do a couple more things with it. So now, <clears throat> so this is when we had g of x is equal to two f of x. So I'm going to erase this because I don't have a lot of space. And this was one of the reasons I was hesitating to do this one because it is quite involved. But let's have a new function. I'm going to. So we did the stretch y factor of two. So what if I had another function, h of x, which I said was equal to one half. You know what? I'm going to use something different. I'm going to do one third. I'm going to do a quarter. One quarter f of x. So now I have a fraction. A is between 0 and 1. So I know I'm going to be compressing, and it's going to be by a factor of 1 over 4. So I'm going to be taking, so let's, let's draw our original function. OK, x, f of x. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. f of x was just 4, or yeah, 4, 2, 0, 2, 4. This is our original function graph. And now let's do h of x. So h of x tells us for the same x input, the output h is going to be a quarter of the output for f, for the same x. So I'm just going to divide each f of x by 4, or multiply by a quarter. So I'm going to get 4 divided by 4 is 1, 2 divided by 4 is 1 half, 0 divided by 4 is 0, 1 half, 1. Okay? And I would expect, so my original function is 4. It's 4 high it, it, with this restricted domain. It's, it's tall by 4, right? It goes from 0 to 4. It's 4 units high. So I would expect that my new function, if I'm dividing it by 4, it should become now just one unit high. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And as I can see here, my unit's uh, range goes from 0 to 1. So that's all we're doing here, is we are manipulating the y coordinate, okay? Because we're dealing with a, we're dealing with something in front of f of x. And again, so this is a compression. Right, so now, at x is equal to negative two, I'm gonna be at one. So I've actually compressed it. Instead of stretching it, I've compressed this. So I go from here, to here, to here, to here, to here. So this is my new function, whereas my original function, f of x, probably looked a little bit more like this. Okay, so I've just compressed this thing. And I used the x-axis to push down on it, but that's, that's how that works. So in this case, I, I've left my x's alone, and I have a new for each negative two. My output is, has been compressed. So that's what, that's what we do, what, that's what a does for us. And there's one last thing that a can do. So we've seen h of x, now I'm going to add a, a new function. Let's say I have q of x, and I don't know what the actual function for q of x is, but I know how it relates to f of x, and I know that it is simply negative uh, f of x, okay? It's the negative f of x. So, q of x in this case, again, we're just going to be manipulating the y coordinates. I'm just going to take the negative of each f of x for the same x. So this is going to be negative 4, negative 2, 0, negative 2, negative 4. Now I know reflections on the x-axis occur when a is negative, and that's exactly what q of x is accomplishing. I have a negative a, negative 1a. If there's nothing there, you can assume the number is 1. It's just, it's nothing. So here, what I'll get is my original function, f of x, looked like this. It went from 0 to 4, 4 up here, 0 down here on the y. And all I've done is I've basically mirrored each output. So now the uh, q of x is going to look like this, where it's going to go from 0 to negative 4. And as we see, we have a reflection on the x-axis. So one final situation is what happens when we both have a stretch and a reflection. So right now all we're doing is we're playing with A. Okay? So what happens when we have a reflection and a uh, <clears throat> and a stretch? So let's say we use, I'm going to use G, uh, I've already used G of X, so let's try 
I mean, I could use a P of X. P of X, I'm going to say, is negative 3 F of X. Okay, so now I'm going to have a stretch by a factor of 3, but I'm also going to have a reflection on the X axis. So every F of X, I'm going to multiply by negative 3. I'm just manipulating my Y coordinate. I'm going to keep my X's the same. So, and I'm going to draw it as two different tables just to show you that. It's, it's, that's all we're doing. So I have x here, and I have f of x here, and I've done this a couple times. And I'm just going to use this restricted domain. And I had 4, 2, 0, 2, 4. Okay, I'm just, I'm just inputting each x into my f of x to get that. Now I have p of x, and all I'm, all I'm manipulating here is my a, which is, means I'm just playing with my y coordinate. So I'm going to have x p of x, okay? Now p of x is just the transformation of f of x. And all I'm transforming is my output. So I'm going to keep my inputs the same, because I'm playing with a, not with b or h. So my x's are going to stay the same. And for each x, I'm going to multiply f of x by negative 3. So 4 times negative 3, negative 12. 2 times negative 3, negative 6. 0 times negative 3, 0. 2 times negative 3, negative 6 and negative 12. So, this is going to become, when we graph it, it's going to represent both a stretch by a factor of 3, so it's gone, it's gone from being 4 units tall to being 12 units tall. We go from 0 to negative 12, it's 12 units tall, but now it's reflected. So, our original function was not quite, so our original function went from y is equal to 4 to y is equal to 0, and it was a parabola with a restricted domain that went from 2 to negative 2. And our new function, p of x, is going to look like this. Okay, we haven't changed the width of this graph, we've just changed the height, and the height goes from negative 12 to 0, okay, for the same x's. So that is what a can do. And now if it was negative one-third, all we would have seen here is a compression by a factor of one-third, and it would have looked like this, okay? So if a is a number bigger than zero, the absolute value of a is a number bigger than zero, then we know it's gonna be a stretch, and if the absolute value of a is between zero and one, we know we're going to be compressing it. So that, is what A does for us. And that is where I'm going to end this video. I'm going to approach each of these letters in a separate video. So this was A, brought to you by the letter A.